well because obviously it's something that I'm very passionate about. And I think that that passion probably comes across in my voice and more so with the learning um, development than maybe in other things. Yeah, that's great. Um, but definitely, if you are looking for a voiceover artist who happens to have a, a natural British accent and who does a very good job of, of communicating with voiceover, Mark's, Mark's your guy. Uh, where could they reach you for that? Would it be your blog? Can they reach you through yeah. your blog? Or? Yeah. Yes, they can uh, They can certainly reach me via the blog. I would be uh, more than happy to... Uh, to answer any questions anyone may have about my voice service, send in my uh, my show reel, etc. That okay. would be fine. And that is at macrofireball.blogspot.com. Yep, or they can tweet me as well on uh, on macrofireball. Uh, Twitter at macrofireball. Macrofireball. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, well, Mark, as always, it's been a pleasure talking with you. It's been a while since actually we've communicated, and uh, and actually we we re met up via Twitter. Again, which is yes, we did. Which is good. It's been a while. We're, we're meeting up all old friends and acquaintances, and uh, I think it had been about four or five years since we had talked before that. So it was it was a pleasure when when Twitter kind of reacquainted us, and um, and now you know Terrence, and Terrence also has a lot of contacts and connections. So hopefully he can get you some some e learn some e learning vocal work or whatever else. But definitely. Um, all right. Well, that'd be great to everyone in the chat room. Thank you so much for joining us today. Terrence, as always, a pleasure having you here. And um, Mark, thank you so much for joining us and sharing um, some of your experiences with Rapid E-Learning and, and really the industry on the whole. So with that, we're going to close down the show. And what yeah. we will do is for all of you in the chat room, we still will be live for another five or so minutes. So feel free to, to join us. And also, uh, Sorry don't, about that. don't miss next week's show, which is uh, Don Pontefract. And I probably butchered his name there, but uh, he's going to be talking about Enterprise 2.0. So that will be an exciting um, uh, discussion as well. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you again, Mark. Thank you. Bye, Terrence. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. You're listening to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. Hello. Okay, we are back. We're live. We're just not being recorded anymore on the uh, Podbean one. And I apologize. I pressed the wrong button at the end, started showing the intro again. It's that's not a, a problem, Rick. No, that's a problem. When, when I look at two screens that look both black, and I just hit the wrong one. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was the other black screen. <laughs> was that okay but, then for you guys? That was great. You that did was great, really yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and just so everybody knows, this is the post show, so it doesn't really have a format. It's just a, it's a chance for us to just tie things up with the, with the guest and with each other. So um, we don't record this, and it's not part of the, the Podbean um, site. So this is uh, only here on Justin TV. Right. This is when we send Mark a, little, a kiss from all of us. <laughs> right back at you. <laughs> <clears throat> I really need no sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> you do them so well as well. <laughs> uh, no, no. I need more. I messed up today. I need, I need to space out my sound effects so my big fingers don't keep hitting the wrong one. I don't know if you can see it, but the sound effects I'm are... They're on this iPad, which is actually connected virtually to or via the network into an application running on the video machine. So the That's iPad hot. is connecting um, that way, and it does a pretty good job, but they made very small boxes. So it's easy when you have fairly big hands to hit the wrong one. So I'm going to, for the next show, I think I'm going to space them out and add more sound effects and just have a little bit more fun. Sounds good. I'm just hoping that, that my cheeks thing. don't look too rosy because they look quite red at the moment on the uh, the little webcam space I'm seeing here. Oh, so I need okay. to do some work in Photoshop. <laughs> you look okay. I was actually going to wear That makes you look welcoming, though. That's, yeah. that's oh, that's okay thing. then. That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, Hale, uh, Hale and the, Pasty uh, is, uh, you know, not good for TV, so we like yeah. rosy and red. <laughs> Fantastic. 
It's always one of those things as well, isn't it? When you do these sorts of things live that you think, are there too many pauses? Am I not saying enough, et cetera? But you guys really uh, help to carry that. So, uh, well, no, every so, so often, thanks. you know, we have a little bit of a pause as we consider, what are we supposed to say? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's unscripted. It just, it is what it is. So <laughs> it is. Yeah, exactly. I hope we didn't, you know, we didn't say anything too uh, controversial anyway. So that's no, no. the most important. No, no. Short, but short, apparently short that whole home. Apple discussion uh, seemed to tip <laughs> some people off. So uh, yeah, actually, you know. and, and I did get served a subpoena from Apple as we were talking because of what we did, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, and I see a crowd gathering outside my window here, starting to throw fruit and stuff. They, at they my have window. signs saying "Apple, Apple." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think long term that HTML5 could certainly have a lot to offer, but at the moment, I mean, the specs not even been finalized yet. I um, no, and it's not truly an inter interactive environment either. It's an extension of HTML. You're still going to need yeah. your JavaScript. It's going to be a lot of work to develop a really good e-learning platform in HTML5. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, it's it's feasible that some of the big software developers like Adobe, et cetera, will want to step up to the plate and enable us to export directly to HTML5. And, sure. you know, maybe that's the best way forward. But at the end of the day, is it really worth the, uh, the resources that it would re uh, require to do that? I've seen HTML5-based videos, and they actually didn't look as good as what you can get from a, from a good H.264 or a Flash or FLV compression. It it just didn't yeah. have the quite the clarity or or cleanness of it. I don't know what the size was like, but I suspect it wasn't that tight. Yeah, I know that Raptivity have done some stuff around HTML5 as well, haven't they? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen the the latest stuff they've done with it. Uh, all I saw was <clears> the original <throat> Flash stuff that they were doing. Um, I, I should check that out. See, that would make sense for them if they're trying to reach different marketplaces, especially mobile learning. Um, but but definitely it's it's one of those that it's a new technology. It hasn't fleshed out. You know, it's almost like we have a, a 24 hour tech news cycle, too. So you've got to keep things constantly moving. And as a result, it's not necessarily good for the industry. It's just watching where it goes and, and seeing if there's any validity to it as as we move along. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the whole validity thing is really important because I think it'd be very, it would be very dangerous for companies like Adobe and also the Articulate guys to jump on the bandwagon if it, it's not going to um, be that well received by the community. That that's true. And and again, you have two different communities. You've got developers, or you've got independent developers who are much more yeah. freeform. They they like all the tools and they tend to go a little more bleeding edge. You've got corporations still yeah. running Win95. I mean, it is exactly. It, it's amazing. I mean, GE is one of our clients, and they are running still. They have not gone to Vista. They're on XP, and I think one day they'll jump to, to probably um, uh, Windows Seven or Eight or whatever. The big company. They have six hundred thousand users. They're not going to change yeah. overnight. And and like that are many large companies that move very slowly when it comes to operating system releases. Uh, we know a lot of companies still on Word 2003. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well, one of the big concerns I had when uh, Adobe in Captivate 5 decided to uh, just go with AS3 was the fact that there's a lot of people still out there, especially in big corporates, that haven't got a chance of using AS3 because they're, you know, to... <clears throat> Uh, implement AS3 players, the Flash player in AS3 format across the entire corporate organization would be a mammoth task. Though you know what's interesting, we had some old pieces done with AS2. They work in a, in in Captivate Five. Really? So we tried it this weekend. We're doing a little talk, and and they all worked. Uh, wow. So we're not quite sure why they say it doesn't work. I think they don't guarantee it will work. Or it may not work as advertised, but in the stuff we were doing, which were really just videos, uh, it worked fine. Right. Uh, okay. I can imagine video would be okay because well, they were also developed with, they were developed with Swish, Swish Max three, which right. has its own interpretation of Action Script, and it must have yeah. been just good enough to be able to sneak in under the Captivate radar. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So as a result, we were able to to get those in without having to recreate. Uh, the the pieces because unfortunately even uh, Swish Max Four does not support ActionScript Three. Yeah, though it is yeah. kind of a derivative of it. 
That's right. And I think as well, sometimes, you know, for example, you may have a big corporate that decides that, you know, they want to use the Articulate wrapper uh, to present their course and want to integrate Captivate-based Swift files right. into that particular environment. And and again, making sure that you've got that uh, that flexibility is really important. And I was, I was really uh, impressed with what Terence said as well about the fact that, you know, Articulate can be a very powerful tool, and I think that's very true. I've when I first decided to go freelance, you know, one of the problems that I encountered was the fact that people wanted to look for developers who had Articulate skills rather than necessarily Captivate skills. Right. And so I think having experience and exposure to a number of applications is actually really important. Yeah. yeah For example, the annotation is. feature in Articulate is great. It makes yeah. it makes certain things. We're doing a project right now where it is ninety percent annotations. Yeah, articulate was the perfect choice. Um, and also the rapid interactions in Engage. I mean, you know, I love the stuff that you can do with Captivate and the way that you can use advanced actions to create your own interactions. It's really really powerful. But again, sometimes you just don't have the time. True. Mm -hmm. True. Though some some of the Engage interactions are pretty easy. You could duplicate them pretty quickly. Other ones are a little mm. bit more complex. Um, I think as far as in engagement, probably Raptivity has the largest number. I think they have 2,500 different. Yeah. That's a lot, and it's it's yeah. not bad. It's they, they really give you a lot of choices with what you can do. Some of them are easy. You could recreate easily, but some are pretty complex. That would take quite a while to 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 put together. And Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but yeah, it, it's the the tools are are getting better out there again. It's like we went from Authorware and Icon Author and some other tools, which were pretty robust back in their day. Director, people forget yep. Director. It's almost non-existent now. But Director was a very powerful multimedia development tool. It had a great language back then. Uh, Lingo was probably a little hard. I think they use ActionScript now. Um, but the old Lingo was a good language for its day. Uh, it was more English-based, so you didn't have to be a hardcore programmer to learn it. And, yes. Um, and it, it did a web development that wasn't too bad. You could deploy on the web in the 90s, and it, it looked pretty good you know, with mm. the limitations of the bandwidth back then. Um, yeah. And, and Flash is very powerful. The problem is it's just not that easy. Um, no, that's right. I mean, you know, once you start getting into ActionScript, especially ActionScript 3, it's it's complicated stuff, to say the least. And I was really impressed recently to see that um, eLearning Brothers, have you heard of those guys? I heard of them. Mm -hmm. They've now um, released um, a online uh, interaction publishing system ah. uh, that takes all their really good interactions that they've created and all their templates and all their games and outputs it to AS2 format. Uh, in a Swift file, which is really, really powerful to, to say a, the least. Action Script Two, not Three. Action Script Two, yeah, yeah, at the moment anyway. Yeah. Because I think that's what all their content was originally developed okay. in. Okay. Um, that's uh, that's my understanding. You know, um, I un don't I un quote me on it because they might have done Action Script Three now. But last time I looked, it was definitely Action Script Two. You know, because they I, don't support Captivate Five. After I finished cursing Adobe for not supporting Action Script Two and Captivate Five. I actually applaud it now because sometimes you need to break with the past that is limiting the product development. Um, yeah. And I think they put the money in adding better features rather than worrying about <clears throat> old stuff that most people didn't use that much anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the big things for the Captivate team is because obviously they were looking at redeveloping the uh, the application from the ground up. Yep. As Shamir was saying last week, it went from Delphi to you know oh, C plus plus. It was worse than the that. I it was Delphi. It was Visual Basic. It was uh, it was uh, C plus. So there was a mixture of three or four programming yeah. languages. So now it's yeah. all C plus plus. So that way, yeah, exactly, they have total control of all the DLLs they're creating and, and everything else. Uh, and that makes a difference. Um, so I understand why they dropped ActionScript 2. At first, I was irritated because we had stuff in ActionScript 2. Now I'm actually looking forward to the fact that you don't have to deal with the older stuff and the new stuff will all be consistent. You don't have to deal with, oh, is this AS2 or 3? You don't care anymore. Yeah. It's all 3. Definitely. And hopefully long term, if other companies like Articulate, for example, go to the AS3 route, then it will mean integrating uh, content from Captivate 5 will be easier. But there are ways around it. I think, for example, that there's a, uh, a web page widget that you can yes. now download. Yep. And you could actually Im embed your content through the web widget. 
Exactly. Uh, the web exactly. app is actually pretty nice, and you could have that content pop up, pop out in its own window. You could have it yep. embedded within the actual screen. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do yet, feature request for Articulate, is a trigger. So you could trigger the web object. That would be cool so that you that could tell be. it where on a page you want it to trigger. Right now it doesn't trigger. You can work around it. You can create a previous slide that does something, and then this, the next slide immediately goes to the next slide, and it launches. Uh, but that would be 